Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies and this is the new Biter V-Box. I think of Botox when I sort of see it. What is this and what does it do? And let's try it out on compound and recurves. So this is a dampener. So we'll just open it up. It comes in basically three models. So this is what it looks like inside. Biter makes good stuff. Nox and, I'm gonna say Nox, plunger buttons, aimed at the top of the end market, not cheap stuff. This is the steel version. So this here is steel, rubber, and steel. It comes in a plastic version also, and also aluminium. The aluminium ones are colored, so like red, blue, orange, green, purple. Um, so stabilizer goes in there, weights go in there. So this is the bigger thread. Um, so if you're running the smaller weights, the smaller thread size, you'll need the adapters. Now it comes with these little discs. Each one of these you can screw in. So they come in different hardnesses. So you can see that one's quite firm, where this one here is quite spongy. So these metal things, either side, are screwed into this plastic or soft rubber thing. So they come in four different levels of hardness. Now why you want a different hardness is another question which we'll sort of go into. But they're nice and flat here. So normally with a dampener when you fit it, they're kind of small there and they flop around. So I'm going to show you. My, this is my Fivix recurve bow and this is my dampener. So when you fit it, so the purpose of a dampener is the vibration comes down the stabilizer and basically if you don't have a dampener it's going to come back at you. So if you add weight here, which is what I've done, some of the vibration will be caught there but this is going to stop it coming back through to you. So it's going to reduce the vibration coming back to the bow when you shoot the shot. So you can see here I put four ounces of weight at the end of the dampener and four ounces of weight here. This is this is tungsten, this is stainless. Um, so I've done that because otherwise it's just too floppy here. So what you can do is you can fit this in the middle there and that will replace this dampener. Now different dampeners come at different price points. Price points. I'm going to say the most expensive is Trueball. Trueball XL, their dampener system, I'm going to guess, is about $300. You can adjust the tension in a very good, great system if you're adding lots of weights. Now, if you're not adding a lot of weight, like these cheap dampeners are fine. They become a problem when you've got too much weight because they'll basically, the thread of it will get ripped out. So that's what this is meant to stop. So the different amounts of rubber you've got in here, so the softer it is, the less vibration that you'll feel coming back to you, but you don't want it being too soft because otherwise it'll flop around. So trial and error with the rubber in the center. So this is big thread. This is little thread, so you'll need adapters. So I'm gonna fit this to this one. Um, but first off, let's have a shot, and that way I can see what it feels like now, and then we'll see what it feels like when I fit the bo Botox, the V-Box system to it. So. And I'm going to say the one at the end of the stabiliser is the one under most pressure because when you sit the bow down, like such, the weight of the bow is sitting on that stabiliser so it will often break. These ones here are generally pretty good. So let's fit it and see the difference. I'm going to say the Fivix ones I have on here are quite good but as you add more and more weight it's going to be an issue. Okay, so. Now, the more vibration you feel in a compound bow, the more you'll need dampness. So a lot of the compound bows these days are long risers, short limbs, very little, vibra little, very little um, vibration coming back to you. So, you know, you may not need a dampener, but it will reduce it. It's the biggest, these are the biggest thing to reduce vibration in a bow. So let's just replace this one and see if we can feel the difference. So it gets a bit confusing because my stabilizer is the small thread. So you have the small thread sticking out of the stabilizer going into a small rate weight which goes into a small little rubber thing and goes to another small weight. So that's easy. Now the problem is I'm going from a small thread to a big thread. So I need one of these. It's an adapter so small to big. So I'm going to put that in there. Now I can put this on the stabilizer. So now I'm going to need another one going from small to big um, to fit on the other side. 
Um, so I'm going to get another one of these and then we'll put it together. Okay, so here's some of the problems you have when you're putting stabilizers together. So this, the adapter, I've got a four, four ounce tungsten weight here. I can't just put it straight in because the thread is not long enough, so I've got to put the thread half in and out. So I've got another thread here, which is that long, to put in here. Now this is going to be too long for two lots of four ounce tungsten. But So this goes in here, then I've got another adapter on my bow. Um, so it goes like that, looks quite clean. Another four ounce tungsten. So like normally you get thread which is the right size, but like that looks clean, right? It looks nice. Now the difference between steel and aluminium, steel is obviously heavier. So if you're looking for more weight on your stabilizers, you'll go for steel. Um, so this is basically the same weight setup as I had before. But now I've got a steel doinker on here. There you go. Yeah, that looks ugly, but let's go and shoot an arrow and see how it goes. Um, you can feel the extra weight out front. Look at it. So you can feel the extra weight of that, um, of, I said doinker of the Biter V-Box. It's significantly heavier than a piece of rubber from Fivix. It's a substantially better system. It's less likely to come loose, less likely to have problems. And look, I really like it and I haven't shot it yet. So it just looks to me to be more substantial, less likely to have a problem. And I don't expect any improvement to the way I shoot. It still gets back to me shooting and me practicing and me executing a good shot. I think it feels deader in the hand. Um, now, that could be due to the extra weight on the front stabilizer, but it's it's notice, noticeably better. So we've gone from a, like a $20 dampener to a $130 dampener. The, I'm gonna say the XL's maybe $300. Yeah, look. Makes my bow feel completely dead. It's fantastic. Um, now, I've tried other dampeners in the past. Um, there's a dampener from Doinker that, I've, that I did a review on. And it was so good I've been using it ever since. In fact, since I did the review, I sold out of that dampener. Um, and I forgot to buy them back in. So I've got to do another order with Doinker to get more of them. Now that was called, there's the weight there. Um, let's go to the compound. Now that's called a Doinker EXO, um, which is very good. So let's try the compound one. Right, so this is my compound setup. So this is the Doinker. It's a rubber case and you can see like it holds the stuff really, really well. Um, so I'm gonna shoot this one and then we're gonna shoot this one and compare them. Now, without studying the obvious, if you've got large hold weights, and this is large hold, you don't need the conversions. And life would be a lot easier. Um, but we're just working with what we've got. Um, I don't want to buy new weights because um, they're expensive. And yes, I do own an archery shop, but I've still got to pay for them. So. Right, so this is the doinker. I'm going to say I really like this when I shot it. So I've got a stack of weight at the end. Now with the doinker, you've got the same issues. Little threads versus big threads. Um, some stabilizers are little threads and some are big threads. So generally your recurve stabilizers are little threads and generally compound stabilizers are big threads. Saying that the dead center uses little threads. So.
I feel basically no recall. It's an amazing thing. And since I've done the review, I've been shooting with it ever since. Now, I think from memory, this Doinker is about $80 from memory. So the biter is more expensive. So a little thread, um, little thread. And here, we go little thread. So we're gonna fit the other one on here and see how it compares. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is convert the dead center stabilizer to the big thread, which we've used that conversion. Now I'm fitting the same thing, so I've gone from basically the stainless steel weights to tungsten, so I've got eight ounces of weight here. I'm hoping that's pretty close to what I have there, and it feels about the same, so let's take a shot. Now going from tungsten to stainless steel, Stainless steel is obviously longer, so there's, I don't know, seven ounces of weight there. Tungsten is less than half the, the length. So if you're changing in your front stabilizer, just notice the bow will move downwards because it won't be as long. Now the theory is it won't catch as much weight, uh, wind. Okay, so let's try this one. Now I really couldn't feel the difference between the V-Box and the bite and the <laughs> and the bite then the Doinker. I really couldn't feel it. Um, Cause this bow is very good and I'm not having a go at um I'm not having a go. I'm not saying like um, the Elite is excellent, although I think it is excellent. It's a bow with small limbs, parallel limbs. So there's not a lot of vibration in the bow. So you're not gonna feel much. Let's just grab the arrow. So my, so the difference between the Doinker and the Biter. So Biter's more expensive. It's made out of metal. So I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be more durable and I don't know if Doinka will hate me for that, but I'm going to say it's probably going to be more durable. I can't say it is more durable because obviously I haven't shot it uh, for enough time to think. I know I shot the, the I've been shooting that Doinka for almost a year now, so, and I have, I've sold a whole pile of them and no issues. So. very very good okay so my summary of the bite I love the four the four um, the four dampness that you've got to make choices on how soft the thing is I think the quality of the product looks amazing this just looks like a quality product big fan of the alloy or the steel you go for steel if you want more weight alloy if you want less weight I think I'd go steel because if you're going to put weight there, well, you might as well put weight there if you know what I mean. Um, so, big fan. Um, now, it is more expensive than the Doinker. Um, and I'm going to say that's probably about right in the marketplace. So, you're paying a little bit more for a premium product, but not up there with the price of the XL. But with the XL, you can tune it. So, with the body, you have to pull it apart to tune it. So there's your major difference. But the Bita V-Box, uh, a fantastic product. I've only just had them come in my store. I didn't know about them before, literally last week. Um, amazing product, I'm a huge fan, and you'll probably see all my bows will be fitted with these, and you'll probably see my shop ordering a whole stack more of these, because this is a really, really good product. The um, V-Box from Bita, for hunting, for, for recurve, for compound, these are the go. Um, Bite is a very easy company to get stuff out of. So if, you, if you're in America and you're a shop, just email them, info at Bita Archery, I think it is, 
and say, look, I want to order some of these, and they just ship them straight into you. You'll get them in probably seven days. Fantastic, and I think you'll sell out of them. And then when you're picking up these, pick up some other stuff from Bida because this is really good, and these will sell. Guaranteed, these will sell. As soon as someone sees them, they'll sell. In fact, I sold one on Saturday to one of my local friends, um, Rico Vatra. He messaged me and said, these things are awesome. And I was like, I've heard awesome before. No, they really are. They're really, really good. I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies. Thanks for watching. And remember, look, this is not going to improve my score. It's not going to do anything. What will improve your score is shooting more and getting better, better technique, better form, getting, spending the time working at it. Thanks for watching. Bye.